Jean-Yves Dadier, who is a former Marshall Fock professor at the Oxford University and a fellow of All Souls College. He was the director of the French Institute in London between uh, 1976 and 1981, and he is now the editor of Classics at Gallimard. He has published 15 books, among them his classic biography of Marcel Proust from 1996, also Le Sens de la Mémoire, which is a book he co-authored with Marc Dadier, and his last book, Le Lac Inconnu, Entre Proust et Freud, also published by Gallimard. Tadier is a world expert on Marcel Proust, and his presentation here today in the Memory Marathon will address the way this pioneering novelist has shaped the way we understand memory. Speaking about, about Proust's Mémoire involontaire, Jean-Yves Tadier asks, is there such a thing as involuntary memory? A very, very warm welcome to Jean-Yves Tadier. I must, in, when I start, thank very warmly the Martin Memory to have an invited me to, to talk to you about um, a very special aspect of memory, which is involuntary memory. We should wonder uh, that uh, it is a novelist and not a scholar or an academic or uh, scientist who has spoken almost alone about uh, that kind of memory, about which anyway we, we have to ask the question, does it really exist? Proust, in fact, is a novelist, not a philosopher, nor a theoretician. But he described the third of a not yet analyzed form of memory, involuntary memory. Uh, <clears throat> as an event in his novel, and a very important one, perhaps the most important of all. Everyone remembers the famous page. The hero or narrator, an elderly man, has tried in vain to remember the world of his childhood voluntarily. Somebody brings him a piece of cake and a cup of tea, which became the most famous cup of tea in the role of literature, especially in France, where tea is not a very widely drunk beverage. <laughs> Suddenly, an acute sensation of pleasure invades him. At first, he doesn't understand why, nor what is the origin of this sensation. He begins a long and difficult search for its origin, and then he remembers. A member of his family used to bring him, when he was a child, a cup of tea with that same cake, which is called Madeleine in French. And then a flood of old childhood memories is brought back to him. The whole structure, the whole system of pattern of, of his former life as a child in the village of Combray is brought back. Quote, all of Combray and its surroundings, all of this which is assuming form and substance emerged, town and gardens alike, from my cup of tea, unquote. At first, it is a taste which starts the process, which should be translated it into visual images and finally in words. A taste. We could wonder uh, later if it is the sweet taste of sin. Why is that so? Proust explained that the visual memories are so often put to work that they are gradually worn out. Other sensations like the sense of taste or the sense of touch are well preserved because they are less in use. With the help uh, of this taste, 
The scenery and characters of Cambrai, the village of the hero's childhood, take shape and consistence again. This process can be translated technically after the evocation of the sensation. Many other sensations return associated with that initial one. After a vertical plunge, there comes a horizontal swim. It works through connotation or metonymy. I quote, I think a thing, a thing we have looked at, at long ago, if we see it again, brings back to us, along with our original gaze, all the images that gaze contained, end quote. It is a complete structure, a total system which arises, which springs up from the past, not only one place, but many places, not only one character, but many characters, a whole family, for instance. Voluntary memory would have been inefficient, quote. It's a waste of effort for us to try to summon it. All the exertions of our intelligence are useless. The past is hidden outside the realm of our intelligence and beyond its reach in some material object in the sensation that the material object would give us." Unquote. The scene of the Madeleine must be completed in the novel by others, which bring back other ideas or compliments. At the end of the novel, in Time Regained, there is another well-known scene involving uneven or bumpy paving stones or cobblestones. The hero enters the Guermant house for a last party, and his foot hit as a, an unevenly laid paving stone. He suddenly feels a strong sensation of bliss associated with a visual sensation of dazzling light, the remembrance of Venice, of two uneven flagstones in the baptistry of St. Mark's is brought back. Here it is. It is not the taste, but the sense of touch which awakens a lost sensation. And then, by association, again, many other related memories have all sojourned in Venice with his, <laughs> with his mother, which had taken place long before. And another feeling is added to uh, this one, one of extreme joy again. The previous moment is rid of any sadness. It is pure and disembodied, says Proust. A third episode appears soon afterwards. The cover of an old book, a novel by Georges Sord, Francois Le Champy, awakens another memory of the time when the narrator's mother used to read uh, this novel to him at night to help him fall asleep. It, quote, it was a very antique impression in which remembrances of childhood and family were tenderly intermingled. Who was the stranger intruding in such a brutal way? It was myself the child I was then." Unquote. Again, the association of ideas is in operation. A thousand magnificent details from Combray came tumbling in an endless, flickering line of memories. Unquote. It is the self whom we were then who res resurrects, resurrects the child I was then. How is that so? There is a neurological explanation and a, a, a psychoanalytical <laughs> explanation, at least. First, the neurological one used to say that some neurons, some neuronal knots uh, or nets, are very seldom solicited, excited. 
They have registered olfactive or tactile memories. They are related in the brain to the hippocampus, to the limbic system, to the circuit of emotions, and to the amygdaloid body. And when they are excited again, the actual memory makes connection, as Proust says himself. <clears throat> it shows a link, and the ancient memory awakens well preserved. Or it can be a whole set of memories, a whole network of facts, people, ideas. Quote, when nothing subsists of an old past, after the death of people, after the destruction of things alone, failure but more enduring, more immaterial, more persistent, more faithful, smell and taste remain for a long time like souls remembering, waiting, hoping on the ring of all the rest, bearing without giving way on their almost impalpable droplet, the immense edifice of memory." Unquote. It has been suggested that some memories serve the purpose of resistance in, in, in Freudian terms. It is easier to return to the past than to deal with current conflicts. The innocence of the memory contrasts with the violence and forbidden nature of the repressed feeling embedded in it. The charge of emotion, a great one, is part of the involuntary memory. Proust uses those emotional memories not to cure patients, but to build his own work of art, because, he says, what we call reality is a certain relationship between sensations and the memories which surround us at the same time. But why is it so difficult to bring them, those memories, to light again? Why does it happen so rarely? If you try to translate the process into Freudian language, which is not very popular those days, I, I regret to say, we might say that those very old memories, dating back to early childhood, have been suppressed or repressed, censored. A violent shock may break down the barrier, for instance, during an analysis, and repressed memories may come to back. Worse than that, this memory can be, is, perhaps a screen memory, which would mean that the Proustian screen of the cup of tea can be understood as a screen memory. In that case, what is behind that screen? What primitive scene? Is it a paradise lost and regained, or a hell? A hell turned into paradise by the magic of art. Some of us do not want to be the child they were again. And if there are no true childhood memories, if childhood is no paradise, what is this, what is it that the inventory memory brings back to us? Let us not that Proust himself wrote in an early notebook that those experiences were um, very rare. There is a question here that we may ma ask ourselves. Have we had such extreme experiences or have we repressed these adventures uh, to live the safe life of voluntary memory? Thank you.